Okay, so I have another adcom from the same customer in New York. Once again, sent for analysis. And this one is a GFA 555. It's not the version two, it's just the GFA 555. Let's just go ahead and take a look at this thing. I do actually have it powered up at the moment. Look at all the heat that's being generated right there on that circuit board. That is actually the dropping resistor that goes down to that little red LED right there. That's all it does. So I'm not really concerned about that. I did check the value of that resistor. It is 3,600 ohms, but it is dissipating about two and a half watts, I do believe, from the 80 volt B plus supply right here to drive that power indicator. Let's just take a look around this thing. It's got four transistors on the positive side and four more on the negative side. I'm not sure which is positive and which is actually negative, but it's in a push-pull configuration. And then a very small preamp board. Not a lot going on here. Four more on the other channel, positive and negative. So eight transistors total per channel. Interestingly enough, they use these little, I think they're two or three watt emitter resistors. And then it's got some pretty beefy filter capacitors down here. Let's see if we can get a close up view of one of them. 100 volt, 15,000 microfarad capacitors, surge 125. And then look at the date on the side of that one right there, 1986. These guys have been around for a minute or two. Shut that light off again. But just a workhorse amplifier. This is a no frills amplifier. It doesn't even have a speaker relay. It just connects the outputs directly to the speakers. But this one does actually have a problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the overhead camera view. And like I said, the unit is powered up currently, and I do have my signal generator connected to it, and I'm feeding it a 1,500 hertz tone. So let me turn up the volume. And you can hear a tone in the background. So I'm gonna move the microphone over to the right channel. And you can hear what that sounds like. And then I'll move it over to the left channel. And you can hear what that sounds like. Very distorted almost like a square wave. Let's go down to a low frequency and see what it sounds like. Listen to the clicking. You can actually hear the crossover point. So I'm suspecting it's got a bias issue where the amplifier is not operating in the class AB mode. I believe it's operating in class C where each half of the amplification stage is amplifying less than 180 degrees. So there's going to be a crossover point where there's no amplification whatsoever. So the first thing I want to do is test the bias on a couple of these emitter resistors and compare it channel to channel and just see if I can see any discrepancies. Okay, so I've got the 87 out here on the millivolt DC range. And I'm just going to go ahead and try to read the voltage across one of these resistors. And I see zero millivolts. Check it across the second one. And zero on that one as well. Let's try without shorting something out, hopefully. And I do see... 0.4 millivolts on that resistor. And 0.4 millivolts on that one. Let's compare it to a known good channel over here, the right channel. And I do see 0.2 millivolts on that one. 0.2 there. These are going to be tough to get to because they're tucked back in here one millivolt on that one, and I'm not gonna to try to measure the other ones because they're just too risky down there. So I'm gonna say that this channel right here is totally unbiased, which means it's gonna go into class C operation. So I need to determine what's going on with that. Is it just 
simply a bias adjustment right here. Could that remedy the issue? Because if you look at this control right there, you can see it's roughly halfway where you see that notch right there. This one is turned, I don't know if it's up or down. Let me go ahead and switch leads on this. I'll get the clamp probes on here and we'll just clamp those and we'll give it a twist and just see if we get bias back. And look at that. I actually can get bias on that channel. Let's go ahead and set it up to about one millivolt. Got my microphone back out here. We're still set at 15 hertz. No more clicking. There's 20 hertz, 30, 40. You can probably start to hear that now. So let's go ahead and put it back on the 1500 hertz tone that I had. Oh, sorry, that's 150 hertz. Uh, I was mistaken. It sounds great now. No more distortion. So while I have the microphone at the speaker, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back down where it was. And you can hear it goes into that buzz. Now I do have audio, so I'm not reading a true voltage across that emitter resistor. But if we get it up into the three millivolt range, you can hear it sounds perfectly fine. So I'm going to have to pull the service manual on this unit and look at how to adjust the bias. And look, they're almost identical now, right to left. And it sounds perfect. So was somebody in here at some point diddling this control? That's kind of hard to say. But like I said, I'll get the service manual out. We'll take a look at the bias adjustment specifications and just see what it has to say. Okay, I do have a page from the service manual and I will pop that up on the screen, but it tells me to make sure that I power this unit on with no load, as in the first paragraph. Make sure it's at room temperature. Let it set for three to five minutes. Adjust the bias control P1 to obtain 16 millivolts, plus or minus one millivolt on the millivolt meter across any of the emitter resistors on the channel in question. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, power is on. And I'm just gonna set this over here out of the way. We'll put that on millivolts. I need to let this thing set and warm up for three to five minutes, as it says. Then we'll crank this up to 16 millivolts. And it says, to check proper bias setting, remove the millivolt meter and apply input signal to obtain 66 watts and eight ohms for 10 minutes with the cover on. Remove the input signal and connect the millivolt meter as in step two and step five, let the amplifier idle until the bias stabilizes and readjust to 16 millivolts. So they want to do a cold setup at 16 millivolts. Then they want to get it hot, then let it cool back off and make sure that it stabilizes at 16 millivolts. Okay, so I've had this thing running for at least 10 minutes now. It says three to five, but I'm giving it 10 because I had other stuff to do. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the bias up to 16 millivolts. Sixteen point one, close enough. We'll go ahead and move over to the other channel. Okay, exactly sixteen millivolts on that channel. Now I did read somewhere that it says that the quiescent current or the idling current on AC should be about 50 watts and it is exactly at 50 watts right now. So I have a feeling as this thing warms up the bias is going to increase just a little tiny bit. 
So we'll come back to this in a little bit. Then we'll go ahead and play some audio into it at 66 watts as they specify with the top on. Recheck the bias and see what it looks like. Okay, well I'm a few minutes into the test right now. I do have a 1000 hertz tone going into this unit. And I am driving it at more or less about 65 watts per channel into a dummy load at this time. It tells me to go 10 minutes, turn the volume down, wait till it stabilizes, and then readjust the bias to 16 millivolts. As you can see, I do have the top back on the unit. I didn't put the screws in it. And I do still have the bias test point running out way down here in the corner of your screen. So we'll come back to it in a few minutes, see what it has to say. So while we're waiting for this thing to finish up its test, the customer did include this filter capacitor modification instruction. I need to contact the customer and see if he wants to do this or if he wants to leave it as is. I would think he would want to do this since he included this. From woodman1200.com, date on it is 6 of 94. It involves removing the original 15,000 microfarad caps, which I did test. 0 .00 ohms ESR, they test absolutely perfectly even though they are from 1986 and replacing them with 18,000 microfarad 125 volt capacitors. So I'll get a hold of the customer and see if he wants to go forward with this capacitor replacement or just leave it as is. Okay, well the time is up. Audio back down to zero. Bring in the fluke. Now this is on the right channel. 43 millivolts and dropping. And we'll go ahead and pop the top off of this thing. We'll switch this over to the left channel. And we're at 33 millivolts. And dropping. So I'll probably just put this on time lapse. Make sure this doesn't go dead and time out. And we'll check back once it stabilizes and see where it lands at. Heat sink is very warm. Okay, well this thing has been, quote, stabilizing for about the last hour. And it's come down to 17.7 .7 millivolts. I have it in the high res mode right now, so you get the extra digit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set it for 16 right now 
And then we'll check the other channel and hopefully it's going to be very, very close. Oop, wrong way. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. It says 16 plus or minus one millivolt. So we're at 16.04 on that channel. Let's go ahead and move the probe over to the other channel, just for the heck of it. Let's go ahead and check one of the other emitter resistors over here and see what it has to say. Yeah, we're at 15, 14.99. So that's within one millivolt exactly. So I'm good with that. At least it's not zero like it was before. Here is the other channel, the good channel. We didn't have a problem with this. It's still up at 20. Let's dial this down to 16 now. Man, this thing is touchy. Okay, 1598. Let's check the other side of that one channel. This is the hard one to get. It's right against the wall. And 16.37. So the positive and the negative outputs are all within one millivolt of the specified range, 16 millivolts. Okay, well, now that we've done that, I know that basically the health of this amplifier is good. So the next thing, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this board out of the unit right here and check all the filter caps. Hopefully I don't miss any this time. And I'm gonna go pull every amplifier board out of this amplifier and remove all the transistors and check the gain to make sure that they are matched. And there's not one transistor that's way off in left field. But unfortunately, I don't have time today, so that's going to be another time, of course. They are rated at, I believe, hard to see right here. Let's turn the light on, maybe that will help. There we go. 0, 0.0 ohms ESR. There it is. Okay, well this thing has been, whoops, hang on. The state of this, as you're watching this video, it's going to be seamless.